Johnson, Archie Moore, Henry Armstrong, to name a few. Tonight, local favorite Corey Spinks puts his undisputed welterweight title on the line in a second go-round with Zab Judah. Well, Corey Spinks in last-minute preparations for a demanding rematch that could lead to even bigger bouts against the likes of Costa Zoo, Shane Mosley, Oscar De La Hoya. But Spinks isn't the kind of fighter to overlook the task at hand. Even though he's fighting in his hometown, he seems fully focused, mostly because he understands just how talented and hungry Zab Judah is. Spinks' mission tonight, erase any doubt and prove once and for all that he is the superior fighter. For more on Spinks, let's go to Al Bernstein. Well, you know, while Spinks' rematch with Judah is certainly compelling enough, a big part of this story, of course, is the venue. More than 20,000 people have paid their way to collectively wrap up Corey Spinks in a big hug that they hope will push him to a win and then even bigger and better things in boxing. But don't call this a homecoming because Corey has yeah, never left St. Louis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, he told me he can't ever imagine living anyplace else. And that's really interesting because his formative years in this city were not without setbacks. Corey, this is the very street <laughs> where you grew up on, uh, and you're making a triumphant return to St. Louis uh, for this championship fight. Were you, did you dream of such things when you were? Uh, in? It was it was one of my my dreams not to just win a world title, but to um, defend my world title back at home in um, St. Louis. Corey Spinks was raised in the impoverished neighborhood of North St. Louis with a famous last name, but little else. His father had become an instant celebrity and a household name with his upset victory over Muhammad Ali. But Leon was an absentee father and hardly a champion in the crowded Spinks household. Corey, you uh, had a, a childhood that was filled with, with issues and uh, some people might have thought that the, the road would be paved with gold because of your name and because you had so much talent and yet it wasn't exactly that way. It was like all about survival. It was like a war going on in the streets and you just had to be careful anywhere you went. A product of these tough streets and coming from a fighting family, it was only natural Corey would gravitate to boxing. And at the tender age of six, he started at this storefront gym. My brother started boxing and everything and, um, and I didn't have to learn like the basic things like to jab and move. His older brother, Leon Calvin, was a talented amateur boxer who assumed the role of Corey's surrogate father. He taught me basically everything, how to talk to women and how to dance. Corey Spinks looking to bring back the old show Dance Fever, I think. Yeah, he's pretty happy, isn't he? Oh, this is just um, something I took from my um, brother. It's, he dances. He used to dance coming to the ring. Corey's version of this dance has become a celebration and an homage to Leon Calvin, whose life was cut short in 1990. For on this bridge, Corey's brother, close friend, and father figure was shot and killed. I saved the tears just until the, you know, the um, funeral. I let, that's when I let it all out. And, um, but um, I had to move on, you know, I, I just used that as strength when I box in the ring, you know, because I know he's there. To this day, the murder remains unsolved, but Corey has successfully moved on with his life and his career. He's a hero in his neighborhood, an undisputed world champion, and now a real son to his father. How'd you build a relationship back with your dad? Um, I, I, how much had to come from inside you to say, okay, uh, I want to do this, and how much came from him? Well, I always, have a, I always had a um, good heart. So when uh, my um, family grew up and started to pay more attention and um, be in my life a little more, so I just opened my heart to him like, because, you know, he is my father. So a lot of things in, in him and me. So, you know, we was uh, some jokesters and um, we liked to make people laugh and that's some of the same things I like to do. So um, I always keep a a grounded mind, you know, and um, that's what I do. I just do me. You know, even in the world of boxing, despite that famous last name, things have not come easily for Corey. 
took him 30 matches to get a world title shot. And even then, he was robbed of a decision after thoroughly outboxing Michelle Pichurillo. But typically, he didn't wallow in his misfortune. Instead, he beat Pichurillo in a rematch to become champion. This young man really is all about overcoming hardships. And Steve, the best part is that he does it without ever losing that positive outlook on life. Well, Al, obviously Spinks has the, the hometown advantage, but could that backfire in terms of, you know, the distractions that go with it? You know, he was asked that question, I think, about 150 times this week. And I think we were the 150th yes. to ask him. He's very steadfast in the fact that he said that won't happen. They trained in Las Vegas to make sure there were no distractions here. Got all their ticket requests handled before they came here. And he feels that this big crowd will not make him get out of his game plan. Outwardly, at least, he does yeah. look cool and calm despite the possible distractions. To the challenger we go, that, of course, Zab Judah, who started slowly in his fight last year versus Corey Spinks and fell behind on the cards but when Judah accelerated he started winning rounds and when he scored a knockdown late in round 12 he came tantalizingly close to winning the fight that dramatic moment fuels Judah and tonight he promises to fire both fists from the start this is a must win for the boxer from Brooklyn he's lost his two biggest fights to date and even at age 27 he doesn't want to have to face the consequences of strike three Controversy sets the status of I'm champion, but I think a great champion and a true champion is a person that can fall and get back. Down he goes. A right hand, he's in trouble. Five fights over. No, no, no. With the Kazoo fight, when I went down, I wasn't given an opportunity to, you know, to go in. So we have controversy here in Las Vegas as Zab Judah protests along with his people. I just felt cheated. So emotion and reaction came in. You know, emotionally, I just wasn't ready to lose that fight. I was looking for that rematch after this one too. So the winner, Corey, the next generation. He didn't beat me, but you know he got the decision over over me. I don't think that Corey Springs can pull the fight off me. I think I picked up strong. I think I started coming in. I started. I started dominating. If I didn't win, it should. It should have been a draw. Here you have it, the rematch, Corey Spinks versus Zab Judah for the undisputed welterweight championship. It's like you you in a win-win situation because you get to fulfill two goals in one night. You know, I get to fulfill the undisputed championship of the world, which, you know, as a kid, I always, I always wanted. And for two, I get to beat back a person that beat me. In my mind, I've never, I've never been beat up, never been destroyed, taken over, never, by nobody. So my two, my, two, my two losses out of my 32 fights are controversial. So, you know, I look at myself like I ain't never been beat. Style-wise, there are virtually no similarities between Kostya Zou and Corey Spinks. And in his title fights against those champions, Judah lost in drastically different ways. Was losing indeed a learning experience? We'll find out tonight. Back here with my partner, Al Bernstein. What do you think, Al? Should we expect... Another close fight? You know, uh, these boxers really are mere images of each other, Steve. So how could it be anything but competitive? You know, the conventional thinking going into their first fight was that they were essentially the same fighter, but Spinks was bigger and stronger. Well, Judah may have debunked that theory by knocking Spinks down and hurting him badly in the process. One thing we know, with two master boxers like this, there is plenty of strategic intrigue. In their first match, only when Corey Spinks stopped using the jab did Judah get inside to do some damage. Slipping Judah's jab is a good ploy for Spinks, and it leads to his own left hand landing. The jab of Judah will whistle over the head of Spinks, and Corey will get in position to fire his own left hand. Corey is a born counterpuncher, and this is exactly what he'll need to do to get another win against Zab Judah. For Judah, well, he admits that his slow start cost him the first fight with Spinks. He needs to pick up the pace early. And he has to get past the Spinks jab so he can close the distance. And then he can land a good left hand like the one that put Spinks down in round 12 of their first meeting. Note the distance between these two. No Spinks jab is present, so Judah can close that distance. 
And then he can throw the big left hand. And Judah thinks this is still in Spink's head for tonight's fight. So in a boxing event where the attendance figures have become as big a story as the fight itself, we are closing in on the rematch for the undisputed welterweight championship. We are set for the ring walks. Let's go to Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, the time has come for the bout you've all been waiting for. Prepare to welcome the boxers as they make their way to the ring. First, ladies and gentlemen, here comes the challenger, the two-time world champion from Brooklyn, New York. Please welcome Zab Super Judah. relatively low $100,000, 12 times less than Sphinx's $1.2 million, an indication of Judah's intense desire to get back on top. Judah, the slight underdog, a reverse of the first fight, well aware of the old boxing axiom to beat a guy in his hometown, you have to knock him out just to get a draw. And he's made it more than clear his intention is to start faster and more aggressively than the first fight. He also said there will not be any showboating, which may have energized Sphinx back into the original meeting. Coming in for what he hopes is the big payback, Zab Judah. Says he's thrilled to be in Spink's hometown of St. Louis. The notion that all the hometown hoopla will put extra pressure on Spinks and make his job easier. He said during the week all this would energize him when he got in the ring. We'll see if that's true. And what's a fight without controversy? Both fighters were allowed to choose their own brand of gloves, so Spinks went with Grants. Judah prefers Reyes, which are known as knockout gloves, but eventually they made Judah wear the Grants. Back to Jimmy Lennon Jr. And now, ladies and gentlemen, making his way to the ring, escorted by multi-platinum selling recording artist Nelly. Here is the undisputed welterweight champion of the world from St. Louis, Corey Spinks.
like something out of a Hollywood movie. What a show as recording star and St. Louis native Nelly escorted the champion Corey Spinks to the ring. And it was deafening. That's the best entrance I've ever seen in boxing. Hard to top it. And while the sellout crowd chants Corey, Corey, we'll lead you to the tail of the tape. Let's size them up. Corey Spinks and Zab Judah for the undisputed welterweight championship. Judah just a year older than the champion. Spinks taught her by a couple of inches, yet the slight reach advantage for Judah. At yesterday's weigh-in, Spinks 147, Judah 146. We weighed them about two hours ago. Spinks was 163, a plus 16. Judah 155, a plus 9. Spinks 8 pounds heavier than Judah. He was 11 pounds more in the first fight. And the notable unified rules for this world title fight. Three belts at stake. No standing eight count. No three knockdown rule. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. If an accidental headbutt occurs before the end of the fourth round, the fight's rule to no decision. If it happens after the end of round four, they will go to the scorecard. So here at the Sabbath Center, the sold-out Sabbath Center, over 20,000 strong here in St. Louis, Missouri, getting ready for our main event, the undisputed welterweight championship, the rematch between Corey Spinks and Zab Judah. Let's get the official introductions from our ring announcer, the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and we welcome you to the Sava Center here in the beautiful city of St. Louis, Missouri, where tonight's live audience has established an all-time attendance record and we are ready for the featured bout of the evening brought to you by Dawn King Productions in association with the Sava Center, Showtime, and the undisputed king of beers, Budweiser. This unification title bout is sanctioned by the following organizations. The WBA President Gilberto Mendoza, Supervisor George Martinez. The WBC President Jose Suleiman, Supervisor Mauricio Suleiman. The IBF President Mary Mohammed, Supervisor Lindsay Tucker. And the Missouri Office of Athletics Executive Director Becky Dunn, Administrator Tim Lukenhoff. Our physicians at ringside, Dr. Raynal Caldwell, Dr. Ryan Nunley, and Dr. Gary Fetzer. Timekeepers at the bell. Also keeping count of the knockdowns, we have Steve Hawley and Jack Martorelli. Introducing to you our three judges, scoring this bout from ringside. From Brick, New Jersey, Tom Kazmarek. From Muncie, Indiana, Gary Merritt. And from Ventnor City, New Jersey, Joe Pasquale. And our third man to the ring, the referee in charge, working in this, his 30th world title bout, Armando Garcia. All right, fans, here we go with our main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the undisputed welterweight championship of the world. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance, boxing fans joining us around the world, live from St. Louis, it's showtime! Introducing to you first on my right, the challenger, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red trunks with white trim. He joins us from Brooklyn, New York. He weighed in at a ready 146 pounds. His record stands at 32 wins, two losses, one no contest with 23 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight he is seeking revenge and challenging for the undisputed world title. Please welcome the two-time champion of the world, introducing Zab Super Judah. His opponent across the ring, the defending world champion on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red trunks with silver trim, fighting out of his 
this hometown and the boxing rich tradition of St. Louis, Missouri. He weighed in at the welterweight limit of 147 pounds. His record stands at 34 wins, two losses, 11 wins coming by way of knockout. He holds the WBC, WBA, and IBF world titles. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome the undisputed welterweight champion of the world, introducing Corey, the next generation. Once again, a referee in charge, Armando Garcia, now to give instructions. She's second only out of the ring. Zab, we spoke in the dressing room. I'm confident that you know exactly what I expect of you. Obey my commands and protect yourself at all times. We agree there's no holding, so don't make me pull your, your guys apart. Is that clear? Right here, I'll accept punches. Right here, I'll accept punches. Good luck. May the best man win. Touch gloves. Spinks didn't budge during those instructions. Judah hopping up and down. This is a case of both fighters knowing exactly what they have to do. Corey Spinks, even though he's the bigger guy, has to stay on the outside and box. His opponent, the challenger, Zab Judah, has to get inside and go to the body. It's a question of who can execute their plans the best. And the way the first fight ended, Judah said he's thinking of this as round 13. He says he'll start faster tonight. Be more aggressive. He did not get off to a quick start in the first fight, saying he lost focus when the bell sounded. Told us he'll be extremely let's focused go, tonight now. because you, there's go. no tomorrow. The interesting thing about this match, and it really fascinates me, is even though Zab Judah is the man that's come up from junior welterweight, uh, and Corey Spinks is the true welterweight. Even Spinks kind of acknowledges that if this is a brawling, no, 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 punching no, 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 match, it benefits Judah. So that's fascinating. And Judah made a very interesting point to us. That fight with Spinks was his very first as a welterweight. He's had a couple since. He's more comfortable with this weight. We'll see if that's uh, a big factor. Spinks not normally a torrid starter, but he was very aggressive and assertive early in the close unanimous decision over Judah last April. Spinks started faster than usual. Says he's not thinking about that 12th round knockdown that nearly cost him the first fight. We talked about Judah's focus. What about Spinks? Could his game plan go out the window? The result of this overwhelming crowd really trying to please everybody. Here's Judah going to work with the long left. True to his word, Judah is making this fight right now. It's not that there's enormous action, but for the most part, Judah's pressing the action and trying to get to Corey now, Spinks, go. especially with that come left on, hand. On, on. Another thing about Judah, known for his showboating and shenanigans, he has been all business. No messing around. He knows the significance and the magnitude of this event. says I am here to take. I'm going to Spinks backyard because I am from Brooklyn. That is what we do. I am from the home of the taking state. Well Brooklyn's not quite a state but it's yeah it feels like one. It's big enough. Well you're Brooklyn you're my hometown as well. So they're on the inside you see Corey Spinks landing a hook but getting right out. Spinks is a good counter puncher, but he hasn't been able to counter punch as well as he'd like so far in this round. Very close round. But not one like the first fight in which the Spinks jab has controlled it. Yoda has been the aggressor here with 30 seconds and counting in round one. Spinks from the top north side of St. Louis, known as the Water Tower area. Used to be very wild when he lived in the city, now more grounded with a wife and daughter. Final seconds. 
seconds of the opening round. Nice left hook upstairs. Nice left hand upstairs by Judah. No, 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 no. Come on, come on, come on. Time! Party time, baby. Oh, oh, yo. You're doing beautiful. You know what I'm saying? You got this. You know what I'm saying? Now you got what you got to do. You're going to come out. You're going to come out moving and running. You got to call them off that and go to the body. This is a, this is a breakdown process, all right? Breakdown. Keep touching them. Yeah, here. Bang, bang, bang. Out, go. Bang, 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 go. All right? You keep touching them. One, two, three, four. You're going to clip them. I'm telling you. Keep your hands up. How are you going? We're going to start. Stay out working, getting you ready. Slipping this line, getting you ready. All right? And keep turning. Keep turning. Stay in the center of the ring. Keep turning. All right? When you come right, little wide. Come wide. Right? Quick right. one, two. Kevin Cunningham, a former St. Louis policeman, former Army boxer, opened a boxing gym in the basement of an old police building. A longtime trainer of Corey Spinks. Spinks has nothing but respect for Cunningham. You know, in, in the case of both these fighters, obviously, Yoel Judah, uh, Zab's father, he has great faith and trust in him. And as you pointed out, Kevin Cunningham, almost a, a father figure to Corey Spinks. So they both have confidence in their corner men, and that's important. Also, Kenny Adams, former Olympic uh, head coach for the United States, in the corner of Corey Spinks, adding a, a good hand there as well. And uh, a great cut man in Jim Strickland as well. So round two and Spinks misses. When, when Spinks ducks in Let's like go. that, and that's one thing they don't want him to do. That's when he gets close enough and short enough for Zab Jr. to do some good work on the inside. And we have seen less of the Spinks jab here than we saw in the first fight early on. He's not doubling up with it as much as he did then, and I, I think that's pretty important for him to do. Come on, punch out now. on Judah, speedy, elusive, versatile southpaw, like Spinks, quick-handed, a lot of movement. The hand speed may be equal here, Zab may have the edge in foot speed. A lot of boxing ability. Tremendous reflexes, makes you miss, so slick and slippery. But then so is Spinks, who's an excellent defensive fighter. Let's go, come on, come on, come on, come on. And probably the balance uh, edge goes to Corey Spinks. And we saw Judah knocked down uh, during the uh, the first fight, primarily because of his balance. I mean, you've seen him, you've done many of his fights, of course, here in Showtime, and you've seen him go down because of that balance issue. Come on, come on, you come like on, the first go. fight. How many punches are being missed? So many were missed in the first fight in the first five rounds, and that was more a testimony to their defense than lack of offense, and the same could be said right here. It took them a while to find the range in that first fight. Spinks really makes for entertaining fights, almost turns it into an art form. Tremendous hand speed. Most people, of course, like watching big punchers, but Spinks, I guess you could say he engages in battle enough to make it interesting. But by no means is he a big puncher, but an outstanding technical fighter. The ring is his office. He's so confident, so relaxed. Let's go, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's go. Spinks working on the inside where Judah wants to be. Judah's been very inactive in this round. This is one of those rounds reminiscent of the early part of the previous fight. And he's allowed Spinks to, I think, to take control of this round after a pretty good first round for Judah. So round two of Spinks Judah in the books. Spinks versus Judah two here at Sabbath Center in St. Louis is a sellout. 20,655 paid, over 22,000 overall. The folks with the promotion claim both are records for a boxing event at an indoor arena, but it's being disputed by a few factions. Of course, there have been larger crowds at dome stadiums, the Superdome, the Alamo Dome, so it's kind of a nebulous stat, but it is the largest crowd ever in Missouri for a fight. You need to stick with working a little bit more. You're letting him get in your in, in his range because you ain't using no jab. This is the towel for the floor. Right. Just like that. He ain't throwing nothing but the left hand. You see that? Round three.
three. One of the reasons for the great turnout. St. Louis sports fans really respect the way Spinks built his career here in St. Louis. Took no shortcuts. Many modest paydays in small local venues. Worked his way to the top the old-fashioned way. He earned it. Interesting though, despite his success, finding it difficult to get respect from the boxing world overall. Kevin Cunningham, we heard him say, of course, Spinks, you're not using your jab. You've got to use that punch more. That was the jab from Judah. And they were talking about Judah's reliance on throwing that straight left hand, which he has tried to get in. Spinks looking to counter punch as Judah comes in. They saw the uppercut there, but he's been uh, unable to do that as effectively as he might. Kevin Cunningham had a problem with the, the judges, two of them were from the East, Tommy Kaczmarek and Joe Pasquale, both from New Jersey, Gary Merrick from Indiana, Kaczmarek uh, highly regarded, one of the, the top judges in the East. That's an issue though, you know, there were two issues, one was the gloves which you alluded to, it ended up being two grant gloves being used, not Reyes for Judah, the Reyes glove, presumably better puncher's glove, whether that's true or not remains to be seen, but boxing people feel. The second was two of these judges being from the East Coast. Um, Kevin Cunningham was livid over that. Gary Merritt's from the Midwest. He couldn't understand why there'd be two judges from the East Coast in this fight. But uh, the administrator here, to look it up, said that, well, he had to deal with the list given to him by the IBF um, and uh, the other organizations, and that was the best he could do. He didn't worry about geography. Let's go, come on, punch out now! Third man in the ring, Armando Garcia from Miami, Florida, before tonight. Probably his biggest fight was Roy Jones, Ricky Frazier in 1999. He did the no, 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 no. Come on, come on, come on. a couple go. of Joel Casamayor fights. You know, they were on the inside there, and Sam Judah wasn't... Oh, there he goes. There's good work on the inside by Judah. Before, he wasn't willing to work on the inside. There he did. Both have a lot of room in which to operate. A big ring, 20 feet, 6 inches. Very tough round to judge. This one is a real tricky one. As we head for the bell, round three. Good. That is me real good. You gotta start getting a little closer now. You gotta start putting three, four punches together. Look, that little push jab. When you, you see him, you see that jab? Skip it. Look, look, listen to me. Look at me. When you see him start to push off? Step, left hand, keep your head up high. Once you in, doom, 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 doom. Look, left the hands go. All right, baby? Keep the pressure on the Zab Judah. When he's on the inside here, you see, he'll work on the inside and throw combinations. And that last right hook got there. That is the prototype. This is the prototype of what Zab Judah wants to accomplish in this fight. When he's in this posture, he can outduel Corey Spinks on the inside. He did that in the first round, first fight. Round four, scheduled for 12 for the undisputed welterweight championship. Two southpaws, superbly skilled. Judah, marching forward, but missed. Spinks is getting low a lot in this fight. Kind of getting himself low and putting himself a little bit in position where things get to him. There's a beautiful left, but a counter right by Corey Spinks. So things are heating up a little bit. That's the crowd going. Zab Judah is starting to close that distance. That's what Yoel Judah told him to do. And in this round, he's doing it. The crowd exhorting. 
their hometown favorite, Corey Spinks. This is their Super Bowl tonight. See how Judah gets low, and it's very tough for Corey Spinks to get to him. Spinks really needs the uppercut as an effective weapon. He has an uppercut, but it's not the major part of his arsenal. Spinks 34 and 2, 11 knockouts. Judah 32 and 2, one no contest, 23 knockouts. Spinks 9 and 0 in St. Louis. There's some good work by Spinks on the inside. And nice left hand by Spinks to the jaw of Judah. He's starting to climb back in in this round, a round in which Judah had kind of controlled it for the first portion of it. This last minute should determine who wins this round. Don't forget, Spinks had Judah down in the 11th round of the first fight, although it was a disputed knockdown. Judah claiming that it was a slip. And then, of course, with 28 seconds left in the 12th, Judah put Spinks down. And if he had about 30 more seconds, may have won the fight. Which makes it so compelling and dramatic, segueing into the sequel. Come on, this come on, round come on, is come on, one that I think Corey Spinks took control of in the last minute. And maybe won in this round. And he's been more active. Judah on the attack. Going to the body now. And an exchange at the bell. You ain't gonna do shit. Move away from me. Alright? Wipe his nose, Kenny. I gotta go. I gotta go this side. Put that up his nose, man. Listen, listen to me. The way we went. Yeah, down. Judah created what was a very good exchange, working on the inside, a glancing left hand. They almost clash heads, but instead it speaks counter punching well with that right hand. Of course, counter punching is his stock and trade. That's a good counter punching right hand, a couple of them actually by Corey Spinks. And later in the round, Corey would land the jab and the straight left hand pretty effectively as well. Spinks showing his mastery of counter punching as we head into round five. These two guys, very good family men. Uh, Zab Judah with four daughters and Corey Spinks with one. They could field a. Uh, women's basketball yeah. team. We saw the lovely Brianna at our fighters meeting. Um, Corey's daughter, she's just adorable. In fact, I have a five-year-old at home. I was thinking to do a little matchmaking. Yeah, that's a good kid. Of course, uh, Zab Judah from a very large family. He has boxing brothers like Corey. Straight left hand by Spinks to Lansing, and Judah wants everyone to know it didn't land and shook his head. This is a fight that will be measured by inches, not feet. You know, it, it, judges have to pay attention. Uh, it's the small things that you have to look at. Judging each round is going to be very, very difficult. No, 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 no. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's go. And Spinks uh, what are you ducking out of trouble so elusive. And how do you not look at a fight like this and think maybe you might judge it on style over substance because there's so much style involved and really only a certain amount of substance. There are only so many punches that land in a fight like this. These are two very clever, crafty lefties. This round's a perfect example. There's a couple of jabs by Spinks, but not much has gotten in. And then Judah follows it up with a couple of jabs of his own. Now there's what Spinks wants to do, throw three punches and get out. The epitome of the sweet science. Hit and not get hit. The mindset of both guys. 
speaks off balance. Corey Spinks has had a pretty good fifth round. Certainly not dominating in terms of large numbers of punches landed, but what has Let's landed for the on, most on, part on, has on. come from him, and he's controlled the tempo of this round. Good, a really loading up with that left. Got him with the right, did Judah? It was more of a slapping back. right like to that. the left side of Spinks' face. Didn't have full power behind it. Spinks it just makes you miss. Let's see if it can make Judah pay. Counter right hand there by Corey Spinks. It was very effective. Great example of the way Spinks did that all night long was against Ricardo Mayorga. Brilliant effort by Corey Spinks. Again. Stop punching, step back. Spinks making Judah miss. Time! How about the look on Spinks' face as he walks back to the corner, looking back at Zab. Well, what's at stake here tonight? The Kostya Zoo sweepstakes are a dream come true for boxing fans around the world. It makes you salivate. You know, some fighters go their whole career without these kind of possible opponents. Some have to retire, they've no one to fight. Not true with Costa Zoo. There are lightweights that could come up and fight him, like Castillo and Corrales and Diaz. Junior welterweights to stay there, like Gaddy and Vivian Harris. And of course, we're going to see Costa Zoo against Ricky Hatton, June 4th here on Showtime from Manchester, England, where the, this kind of crowd will be on hand for Ricky Hatton. So that should be a thrilling match. They'll have 20,000 for that one, and that particular event sold out in three hours in Manchester. Wow. Here's Judah coming in, pushing the attack, did land that straight right hand in a round in which otherwise Corey Spinks was able to counter him pretty well, but that's an example of what Judah wants to do in this fight. And it's round six, scheduled for 12 for the undisputed welterweight championship from the state-of-the-art Savage Center here in St. Louis. Missouri, a crowd of 22,370, a complete sellout. Great left hand that pushes Judah back. Men trying to use the jab effectively. There's no question Spinks has used it less come, than come, he come, did come, come, in the first fight. Now. Step back. He was doubling up with that jab and being very effective within that first fight, and it's been sporadic in this. Spinks, uh, although very low key, laid back, a tough guy from the mean streets of St. Louis, had his share of street fights before entering the amateur ranks. Off a great 2004 with wins over Zab Judah and dominating victory over former champ Miguel Angel Gonzalez. He is no, 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 revered no, 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 at his on, high school, Corey Spinks. We visited go. Beaumont High School. They've got a band here. Uh, he goes back and visits every every single uh, month. He goes back and visits, plays basketball with the kids, and uh, it's. Let's go, punch out! Come on! And uh, when we were there doing the feature on Corey, we got to see it, and it's uh, it's really remarkable. Doesn't forget his. His roots, his upbringing. He's had a number of upset wins. Won the IBF welterweight belt over Michelle Pizzerio in Italy. Not an easy task. And then wasn't expected okay, to on, beat on, Ricardo Mallorca for the let's go. BA and BC belts. Come on, come on, come on, let's go. You got, can't do that, all right? And then he was the, the underdog in the first fight with Judah, so that too an upset. This is a very close round here in round six. Judah has gotten a little more done in this round. And again, you're not looking at mar large quantities of punches landing, so very difficult to pick out a winner. And Corey put the proverbial Spinks jinx on Judah again. Looney to his uncle Michael's vaunted right hand as a light heavy, but Corey the money punches the left. That combination, very showy, gets this crowd going. That's the kind of thing Spinks wants to do a lot of. Judah digging Stop to the midsection. Step back. Die! 
And a smile from Zab. Him, touching him and finding him and firing in the hand. We see uh, Corey Spinks landing the counter left hand there against Zach Judah. And they are now, Spinks is really trying to hold the referee Garcia warning them about hitting on the break. Uh, but uh, Corey doing a little holding. And here's Corey Spinks landing that straight left hand after the jab. That was maybe his best moment in that last round and that is something he wants to do a lot of in this fight if he can a very very close round might be a pivotal one in there round in round six zap judah two and oh since the loss to space round seven comes off a first round tko over wayne martell zap scoring five knockdowns in the first round october 04 an obvious record padding fight and then five weeks after the Sphinx fight, an unimpressive split decision of a 38-year-old, 19-year veteran, Rafael Pineda. Too much clowning around by Zab that uh, night, but Zab's speed too much for the veteran. Pineda, the only common of all. And they both had trouble on, with Pineda. He's a very difficult man to, to fight. Um, Corey won a uh, win in seven over him, a technical decision win, but Pineda gave him trouble during the course of it. Stop that cut. Come on, come on, come on, what are you waiting for? for Nice right hook by Judah. It's not a punch he uses that often, but that one got in. And there's the jab of Zap Judah as well. Judah was 28 and 0 before the spectacular one punch knockout loss to Costa Zoo. Scores at the midway point from press row. Hallway has it even. Leon by two. The other had it by four. Ludo Sainz. I have a 58-56 for Spinks, but I assure you. This could be an even fight. It could be very. No, it no, could no, be even no, closer than no, 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 the two points because these rounds are very difficult to score. Little hook on the inside by Spinks. It's in the hands of Tommy Kazmarek of Brick, New Jersey. Gary Merritt from Muncie, Indiana. And Joe Pasquale of Mentor City, New Jersey. That's the midway point of the seventh round, scheduled for 12. Now we've seen Judah with those quick offensive bursts and the fact that he's coming forward mostly in this fight. But for the most part, I think the reason Spinks might be appointed to a head in this fight is because he's controlled the tempo, counterpunched fairly well, and Sam Judah's on, still been now. a little bit inactive in certain rounds. No, 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 no. Come and on, when guys, you're in the other go. guy's hometown, you got to do a lot more to impress the judges, I guess. That's well, I suppose. I mean, two of these judges are from New Jersey, so in theory you shouldn't. But step obviously, step back. it's you know, there's the, the feeling enveloping everybody in this building, and that happened. That's what did not sit well with Spinks' intense trainer, Kevin Cunningham. No knockdown. No now, knockdown. Now, let me tell you a subtle thing that's happening in this fight. Zab Judah's figuring it out. He's got a found a home for that right hook. It's not his major weapon, but I'm telling you, he can land it against Corey Spinks. And oh, no, it's no, no, a punch no, 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 I think no, 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 your no, 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 is going to remind him to keep throwing. Could be an important weapon in the rest of this fight. If you're just joining us, no knockdowns. Spinks was going for one there with that big left. But it whizzed by the ear. A left hand that... that uh -oh. Spinks, Spinks is momentarily dazed. He did not go down, says Armando Garcia. As the bell sounds. Any part of the body that hits the canvas, it's a knockdown. Garcia says no. And you fucking did it like right? You cannot do that, man. You cannot be lazy not nine times in this fight. You got to be boxing, dude. I don't know why you stand around like he gonna let you rest, man. He is not gonna let you rest. As long as you... We go back and look at it at the end of the round. A tremendous left hand lands. Now, the question is, was he pushed down? It wasn't from a punch exactly, but clearly the punch before that probably led to him going down. So maybe the appropriate call by Garcia, but 
It could have gone the other way, too. Corey Spinks clearly hurt here. There's no question about that. And obviously, he did go down, but Armando Garcia is ruling that he went down after the bell. But he was dazed, and now Judah looks head? to pick up where he left off at the end of the seventh. And there is, was it, this, this crowd is gasped when that happened. A collective gasp of better than 22,000. There's the hook from Zap Judah. The hands are very low and no jabs with Spinks. That's why that happened. It's reminiscent of what he, the way he was fighting in the 12th round in, the, in his match. Judah wants Spinks to trade with him. He's trying to lure him into a brawl. And the fact that that knockdown came after the bell, if this fight goes on to a decision, that could have been a two-point round. So that may be an important situation. Huge. Well, let's see how Corey Spinks, the hometown hero, responds. But Zab Judah right now just brimming with confidence. He's supremely confident to begin with. Left hand by Judah. Let's Missed. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Spinks Let just stuck it away. Good shots on the inside by Judah. But Spinks coming back on the counter punch. Watch, watch, watch. Stop, watch, stop, watch. It's all Zab watch Judah head. now, the aggressor. You see. Where'd he go? Let's go. And now Spinks takes his watch mouthpiece your head. up. Watch your head. Claiming that he was headbutted. The crowd urging Spinks on. Judah looking to corner Corey Spinks. Zab Judah told us all week, he told everybody, I can trade with this guy. He is not a knockout artist. I don't care if he's the bigger welterweight or was. I can trade with him. He's proving it, but there's some nice shots by Corey Spinks. Spinks showing some signs now. But Judah doing most of the stalking. Under a minute left in the eighth. Oh. Spinks with a, with a right. And Spinks just grabs hold. Like that, all right? Corey Spinks does not want to fight on the inside. That's why he grabbed him like that. The fight changing dramatically at the end of round seven. No punching, no punching. And Step more back. good action here in the eighth. And the boxing match has suddenly turned into a fight. Now Spinks has been able to land his own straight left hand as Judah comes in. And remember, he did knock Judah down in that last fight, though his knockdown in the 11th did not hurt Judah as much as Judah's hurt him. Spinks was dazed in that 12th round of the first fight. Jab just didn't have enough time to polish him off. And in this round, a very good beginning for Judah. Some good moments toward the end for Spinks, but I don't know if that was enough to win Spinks the round. Things really you go another way. getting don't interesting go now. Left hand. Go the opposite way. You get in his ass when you go that way. You ain't got, you ain't got no problems with this dude. You ain't got no problems if you just do what you do. Box. We'll take a look at the end of round seven. Regular speed. Now you heard the bell. It came just before he hit the canvas, so Armando Garcia probably correct. And here in the last round, again, Corey Spinks would get hurt as Judah pushed him back with that straight left hand. And that's where the head went into the mouth, and then Judah keeps punching. But yes, it was a, a clash of heads, or uh, certainly from the standpoint of Spinks, he would say a head butt to the mouth of Corey Spinks. That's the way Zab Judah, you know, Zab Judah wants to get in there and make it a rough and tumble brawl. And remember that, you know, the old days, you did all these Zab Judah right? fights. Crafty, clever boxer. Uh-uh, oh, oh, tonight, he's the bull. And Spinks, the Matador, round nine, scheduled for 12. Judah has taken control since the end of the seventh round. When he momentarily staggered Corey Spinks at the very end of the round. Now, Corey Spinks is 5-0 in 12-rounders, and Judah is 4-1. and one. The only loss came to Corey Spinks. Big left hand over the top to the head of Judah, and that stopped Zab in his tracks. Part of the reason
reason more of those left hands haven't landed for Spinks is he's not set them up appropriately with his jab. He's just flicking the jab. More of a range fighting jab, not doing much. The movement of Corey Spinks not as crisp as it was a couple of rounds ago. Perhaps that display at the end of the seventh round had something on, come to on, come do on, with come it. On, stop going, step back, step back. Again, Zab Judah, though, not super busy. Oh, another straight left hand there by Spinks, a counter shot. Now his punch is looking a no, little no, no, more no, no, crisp. No, 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 punching, step A little back. sharper, Spinks. Past the midway point, round nine. Look at the press row scoring. Two out of three have Spinks ahead by two. One has Judah up by two. And I have a dead even at 76. Good work by Corey Spinks. He's doing well in this round. This may be a round in which he can edge your head, at least on my scorecard. Maybe ahead as some of the press row people said. Uh, show this on there. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Judah with the big left hand. Now jumping all over Spinks. Down goes Spinks. This crowd is aghast. He's got 40 seconds. Round nine. Spinks in trouble. Judah landed another left. Blanketing Corey Spinks. Stop punching. Stop that. Let him go right now. This crowd Let's in go. disbelief. Missing with the left. Got him go. with the right. The rope pulled him up. Judah looking to Amanda Garcia saying that should have been a knockdown. Because the rope held him up. It's all in boxing. Not that Zab Judah didn't have a chance to win this fight, he certainly did, but for Corey Spinks, just a terrible moment in front of this giant crowd. Look of disappointment and astonishment at the same time on the face of Corey Spinks. And Zab Judah, the man from Brooklyn, has come to St. Louis. And he did what he said he would do. He would take the titles away from Corey Spinks. And now hoist it to the shoulders. He will exult and celebrate. And it will not be appreciated by the fans here in St. Louis. What drama. And Spence still looks like he's in shock. Did somebody say trilogy? Well, you could make the case for one, but certainly this was a more dramatic victory for this man. Zab Judah, the slight underdog, comes into the hometown of Corey Spinks. Yeah, he's got one of those three belts there. Takes away the undisputed welterweight championship of the world here in St. Louis. Able to avenge his loss to Spinks in the first fight as he brings the belts home to Brooklyn. Corey Spinks is still dismayed and shocked. A show of sportsmanship here as Judah and Spinks come together and embrace. No showboating, no shenanigans, all business by Zab Judah. And he got the job done. And he's back on top. Zab Judah. And he took it for 12 times less the money as Corey Spinks. Well, Zab Judah didn't get the gloves he wanted, the Reyes gloves, but it didn't matter, did it? He did plenty of power punching with the Grants. That's the left hand that put Corey Spinks in big trouble. Judah thinking perhaps there should have been a knockdown or even a stoppage shortly after this and looked for the referee to stop it. There, of course, was the first knockdown. Um, and just a barrage of punches. And you know, when Zab Judah has someone hurt, he has such 
quick hands and he's such an accurate puncher that he's going to get them down. He did get Corey Spinks down. There was about 40 seconds left in this round, as you pointed out. So there was enough time for him to get the job done. But we look at that knockdown again. It was the straight left hand, which has been the bugaboo for Spinks when he fights Judah. And yet another one that sends him reeling backwards. He may have come up from the junior welterweight ranks, but Judah brought some power with him. Too much power for Corey Spinks in this fight. Spinks would go down. He would get up, of course, beat the count. But with 40 seconds left in this round, he would not be able to sustain. And we see the end of the fight here. There's that right hook, trying the right hook. And again, the straight left hand by Judah and he had been nailing Spinks with these punches no complaints from the corner of Corey Spinks and for Zab Judah this may not be the location where he wanted to celebrate but you know what internally he's happy whatever these fans are thinking and he celebrates Zab Judah evens the score Judah surrounded by family and friends and what a remarkable comeback for Judah, who only a year or so ago really was maybe by some considered lost in the sport of boxing. All right, now let's get the official word from our ring announcer, Jimmy Leonard Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 2 minutes 49 seconds. In round number 9, our referee in charge, Armando Garcia, stops the contest. The winner by way of technical knockout, he is the new undisputed welterweight champion of the world, Zab Super Fitting on Super Bowl weekend, Super Judah gets it done. And a very disappointing night. Corey Spinks getting a hug from Papa Leon, the former heavyweight champion. Somewhat reminiscent of when uh, Michael Mudd lost in his hometown of Iowa to James Tony. Steve Farhood getting in place to interview the new champion. As you can see, Zab Judah, a packed ring. Standing by with the new champion is our Steve Farhood. Steve, take it. Zab, Zab, why was it different this time? Um, I was determined, man. I was hungry. They put me in the backyard that put me, they put my back against the wall, man. First of all, I want to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and Lord and my, and, my, and, and my God, man, because without him, I couldn't have made it, man. That's number one. You, he boxed and moved a lot more. You said you'd be more aggressive. Was your aggressiveness the reason you were able to land so many more shots? Well, first of all, you know what I'm saying? I know Corey Spinks is a great boxer. You know what I'm saying? You could tell, like, in, 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 one, in one of the rounds, he kind of got a little edge up on me, but I was determined, man. I told Don back in Florida, I said, Don, I'm going to St. Louis, put it anywhere, and I'm knocking him out. I'm not going to win. I'm going to knock him out. Always, if you look at my press, I've been telling everybody, I'm going to knock him out. No disrespect to him. He's a great guy, a great fighter, but it's my time, it's my era, and I'm determined right now. Zeb, after you knocked him down in the last round, it looked like you were waiting for the referee or almost telling the referee to yeah. stop the fight. What was going on there? I mean, like I said, like I saw people at the end of the night, me and Curtis Spence, you know what I'm saying? We got a date, a great deal of respect for each other, and I didn't want to hurt him in like that. I mean, I was hitting him, and, and you know, I, seen, I seen his eyes rolling around his head, and, you know, I didn't want to kill him or anything like that, so I was acting ref to stop it, but the ref, you know, choose that the fight should have went on, and, you know, I'm my own referee in here, man, definitely. Take a look at the monitor, Zeb. This is the knockdown. Some left hand, tell us about it. I mean, I mean, you can look at my record, man. My left hand speaks for itself. You know what I'm saying? That's one of my great assets. You know, he did a great job of getting away from it in the early rounds. But you know what I'm saying? At the, at the, at the end, I kind of I kind of caught up with him. Now, this is the end of the fight, Zeb. Um, we're imploring the referee to stop it. Like I said, I have a great deal of respect for him. I'm not trying to hurt this man here. He got a family, he got a wife, he got children. And I'm not trying to, you know what I'm saying, see none of us in here go ahead and get terminally hurt. I asked the ref for some help with it. Look, look, I'm really like, ref, what you doing? You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I said, hey, let me go ahead and do what I got to do best. Corey Spinks, you're here as well. What are you, you're looking at the monitor as well. What do you see? Well, well, he caught me with a good shot. You know, um, I feel that I could have continued. You know what I'm saying? A count would have, would have just got me, you know what I'm saying? He had me a little groggy, but I could have finished the fight. Well, the score is 1-1 now. Is it going to be a rubber match? Would you oh, both yeah, like to see so. it? I hope so. I, I gave the pleasure of giving him a rematch. I hope he do the same.
Zab, I have no problem with it. Big Don is right here. He's in the horizon. This is the man that, that speaks it all. It's the guy that brought me back when everybody thought I thought, thought I was out. I let him make my decisions. Trilogy DK. What is that? A trilogy, three fights. Oh, it's got to be like just like it was with uh, Ali and Frazier. You know. Yeah. So we're gonna be working at it. We're gonna be working at it. It's gonna. We got. We want to fight anybody and everybody. And Spinks is a good, good fighter. Yeah, he is. So the other possibilities are welterweight for these two guys. De La Hoya, Zoo, put them on hold. Any of them. Any of them. They all. They all out there. There's opportunities for all of them. Welterweight is alive again with Spinks, with Jab Judah, with with Oscar De La Hoya. Every one of them is out there. Shane Mosley. Anybody that wants to be in the in the group there, they can fight him. All righty, maybe we'll see Spinks Judah 3. Steve, back to you. You know what I'm saying? All right, Steve Farhood, thank you very much. The crowd stunned. Better than 22,000 here. Many uh, just stuck in their, their tracks. They, they can't even move. Some of them have headed for the exits to go outside, but many of them are just milling around. Trying to make some sense of this, Al. Certainly not the ending they anticipated. Over 20,000 people. This city had gotten behind this event in just a huge way. They were looking ahead to all the great matches. And uh, what an interesting tableau there. As Don King talked about other welterweights who might be facing Zab Judah. The look on Corey Spinks's face, uh, not a happy one. Let's see how the scoring went for this fight when the fight was stopped. Tommy Kazmarek had Judah up 77 75 Gary Merritt Judah 79 73 wow by wow. six points and Joe Pasquale had it by four points 78 74 Judah where were you uh, at that particular juncture uh, Al well my scoring let's see I had it uh, I had uh, Judah because of the two points I would have had him two points ahead in that fight 70 uh, by two points so you had it more on the line of uh, New Jersey's Tommy Kazmaier yes and the press row scores uh, had it a, a split decision. They had uh, Spinks ahead. A split decision for the hometown uh, favorite, Spinks, 77 75 by two uh, of the press row guys. And then Cameron Holloway from the St. Louis Post Dispatch. How do you like that? He had Judah ahead, 77 75. So the hometown. Uh, sports writer had Judah up. Well, I think it was a much closer fight than two of the judges had it. Certainly, certainly Judah would have been ahead by. Uh, actually, I had it even now that I think about it. Except the two points would have put him ahead. Yeah, and, and the extra knockdown had it been called, although it did come after the bell, would have also aided Judah. Zab Judah there with his dad, his trainer, his manager, Yoel Judah. So the gamble pays off in a way for Zab Judah who took this fight for only $100,000 I say only relative to Corey Spinks's one point uh, two million dollars and now he will be able to cash in I would think a really interesting interesting metamorphosis for uh, Zab Judah you of course did the fight when he lost to Costa Zoo he was punched out by Costa Zoo you know too powerful a fighter for him at 140 moves up to welterweight and granted Corey Spinks is not a big puncher not a powerful welterweight and yet it's Zab Judah at this weight that gets the job done as a puncher against Corey Spinks. Now, here's the point. In the future as a welterweight, we may see Zab Judah the boxer again because there are other welterweights out there that hit harder than Spinks, even if they're not as good boxers. What do you think this does now to the Zoo sweepstakes? Well, it's very interesting. Certainly, Zab Judah would like another shot at Costa Zoo. And Costa Zoo is thrilled to fight any left-hander anywhere, anytime. And I think he'd love to fight Judah again should he get past Ricky Hatton. Al, what about the depth of damage? in the career of Corey Spinks. It's pretty dramatic, really. Uh, it's not to suggest that he can't be a player in the welterweight division. He needs this rematch right now, I think, at, at, you know, in his mid-20s, because it will be tough for him to get back. He's a left-handed stylist, and those are not fighters. I referenced Michael Nunn. When Michael Nunn lost to James Toney, it took him a long time to get back. He had to jump a weight division to get back. He was, like Corey Spinks, a left-handed stylist. They're not in that big demand everywhere. Well, we pointed it out at the beginning the possibility of the hometown advantage working against you it could at times be a distraction you want to please everybody so much uh, you're answering to a lot of people a lot of things going on in your head and perhaps Zab Judah had a clearer head 
going into this fight? Well, you know, I think Zab Judah was right when he said he got into Corey Spinks's head with that last knockdown in the 12th round because Corey Spinks was a fighter who talked all about boxing. They were worried about puncher's gloves. And when he got in there tonight, he was all about safety. And when he got whacked, he, he got hurt by Zab Judah. So I think the grand answer here is that Zab Judah is a very good puncher when he faces Corey Spinks. And he can get that straight left hand in against Spinks. So that's this is maybe Corey Spinks' is Waterloo. And Judah told us at the fighter meeting yesterday he's most comfortable now at 147. And uh, he proved it here tonight. He really did. And it'll be fascinating to see his development as a welterweight. If he faces guys that come up or if he can fight some of these other true welterweights like Margarita and some of those other people. All right, we're going to uh, take you uh, into the dressing room right here. It's very dramatic behind the scenes uh, material of Corey Spinks taking off uh, his equipment, his tape, his uh, boxing shoes. Very lonely uh, situation right now for the former champion. Corey Spinks bringing his title home to St. Louis. And as I pointed out at the beginning of the show, bringing it home against a very tough opponent. Normally when you fight in a, a home crowd environment, you take on some tune-up or some fringe contender. He didn't do that. And, of course, he, that's why they put 20,000 people in here. But it's also why he ended up losing. Not the way Corey Spinks had it planned. That is for sure. So a very, very tough night for Corey Spinks. Uh, look, well, what do you think about a third fight? Well, you know, I think you can make a case for a third fight. The problem is that Zab Judah, I think, has demonstrated that he has more power than Corey Spinks, and so Corey Spinks will have to fight the perfect fight to beat him. Can he do it? Possibly, but it still remains to be seen. How about Corey Spinks, Zab Judah? Now in Judah's hometown. Well, and that's the point. It sure won't be in St. Louis, I don't think. Of course, they can make a lot of money here. All right, so we'll see what happens in the weeks and months to come as far as this situation is concerned. Will there be a third fight? We'll just have to wait and see, so stay tuned. As we wind things down from St. Louis, let's take a final look.